Hi there, beautiful souls. Welcome and thank you for watching. I'm Gabrielle, retired medium in Germany, and I like to share some of my otherworldly experiences and insights. So this one is about projection. We think we all know that word and what it means, but mostly we don't. Because projections are kind of a, a thing from psychology thrown around a lot and um, well it just means projecting whatever is inside of you consciously or not feelings or thoughts onto the outside kind of onto a canvas or like uh, a projector showing films is doing, he's projecting through a transparent image, he's throwing light through that and is projecting the image onto a, a big canvas like in a cinema. We are doing the same all the time. The old Hindu tradition had a very special saying that goes the following way tat tvam asi and that means that is you and that means whatever you encounter in the so-called outside world other people that do not really exist because you you are the creator, you live in your own reality bubble, you created versions of yourself with whom to interact and maybe get shown your blind spots or learn something and you only think it's Bob from the neighborhood. It is not. It is your version of Bob that you created in your own little um, simulation of reality. That's hard to grasp, I know. I got my head uh, bent like a pretzel, uh, not only several times, but, but uh, again and again and again, because consciousness is so much more and so much bigger than we can imagine with our too little human head that can't uh, get it sometimes. So it's the mirror principle known also by that name. So everything is mirroring you. If someone comes along and says something to you that triggers you, it's only showing you the trigger is inside, it's not the other person hurting you or insulting or accusing, accusing you of something. You created that to have a look upon your own self, your blind spot inside of yourself that you're not able to see. That's why the ancients called the human system not just the human, like we think this is all. No, it is not. They called it a microcosm. And a microcosm is Latin, translated into uh, modern day world, uh, words. It is the world in small. And what we call macrocosm, the so-called world outside where Hubble goes and watches for uh, other planets and whatever, is just the mirror of the microcosm. So everything is here and now all at once in you, within us, all of us. And I got some lessons lately where I had to nag a little bit uh, onto them because, um, you know, I sometimes have uh, still some clients, although I'm uh, retired and don't want to work uh, with uh, that many people any longer. And uh, I encounter, uh, you know, nearly everything. I have to be kind of 
a psychologist to find out whether they really lost some marbles or they have a psychological issue. But why then do they come to a medium that should care more for spiritual uh, kind of purpose of life questions and spiritual path things when they have psychological issues and problems they should better go to a psychologist and uh, take the route of uh, psychotherapy which uh, the German author Thomas Mann in one of his books called uh, The Talking Cure in old German words. Yes, there are people that only want to talk and they talk like children. There is no structure. They're not able to distill the essence. They are like children just retelling what they had experienced. And then they kind of vomit all this whole story uh, to my feet or maybe to the feet uh, or above another medium. And the medium has to sort out like a mother for their children what is what, what is important, what is not important and so on. And I'm a bit sick and tired of that uh, kind of work. I prefer people who already know, oh, I got an issue there, you know, or I want to know my spiritual path, what can I do to better, how can I do it better and things like that, because then I can go right to the goal and work on that. But still, sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, but uh, many women are like that because they use more the holistic, the female part of the brain which is not all already or which is not yet uh, combined with the rational, the male part. So they're just retelling what they lived and they're not able to distill the essence and kind of give a table of contents or something like that. That's what I love in men. They say, bam, 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 that's it. And that's something I can work with. But if I have to listen for half an hour, you know, they're nagging on my ear uh, for stories like ch little children talk. Uh, and sometimes I even lose my patience and it's going like that. Yes, I was the house. I was at the house of my um, uh, my school friend, uh, Robbie, and we were in the garden um, of his uh, parents house. And then came the neighbor girl and she did that. And then we said that. And then this happened and blah, 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 blah. Instead of telling, well, we had a conflict with the neighbor girl doesn't matter where, whether it was in the garden, in the house or in the woods or wherever, you know, that's not an important fact. And what was the conflict about, you know, something like that. This is structured speaking. This is also what is used in storytelling. You have to have a starting point, then you make kind of the bow of tension and you have to know the ending point. When a writer wants to write a book, he has to know the end before he starts writing. Otherwise, he's getting lost in the details and doesn't even know where he wants to go to. And many people still are like that. And our society keeps us like that. We get confused by all the different mainstream media, false information, by TV, uh, newspapers and whatever you hear on the streets from your neighbors, from your family, from whomever. So there's a lot of information and it does not match. And the only thing helping there is how do you feel about that? What does this do to you inside? Are you feeling okay with that? No, you're not. Well, then go and do something about it. You know, there is this wonderful video I really love and you can even laugh about it because it's just so hilarious if it wasn't so sad that many people don't get it. It's from an Indian man called Gaur Gopal 
and you can uh, Google it and look it up and have some fun and have a good laugh. It's called Why Worry? And he's telling kind of a flow diagram in words. You can even depict it graphically and you find out it's a flow diagram. And he's starting like that. You have a problem? with this wonderful Indian pigeon accent, and I love that, makes me smile right away. You have a problem? Can you do anything about it? No? So why worry? You have a problem? You can do something about it? Why worry? Go and do something about it. And that's so grandiose and wonderful and I think uh, we can learn a lot from that. So we're always more or less projecting without knowing it and we're accusing the other of we, what we are doing ourselves. If you don't check in on yourself and reflect your inner processes of thought or feeling, you fall prey to projection and you're not even aware of it. And you say to your friend, you are doing this and that. And already Byron Katie did wonderful work just exchanging one word in the sentences we let out so very often unaware and unconsciously. Like, you are always doing this and that. Just exchange you for I. I am always doing this and that. And if you ponder on that, you will find out, oh, there is truth in that. We're all doing something wrong, not even being aware of that. So we're all kind of a victim of projection. That's why I have to make a video about projection to bring it into consciousness. Although the word is there and everybody is talking about that. And I had some uh, not so nice experiences recently with uh, so-called friends. I thought they are friends, but it went that way. One was a former client that befriended with me and already that should have given me a sign, but it did not. I did not want to look there. I wanted to have a friend. So she was inviting me for tea and coffee and uh, from two hours in the afternoon, it became five hours. And as I like to talk about spirituality and these things, she was bathing in my energy and she even had without paying for that as other people have to pay for a session with a medium she just invited me as a friend and had all the whole thing and just took it and she never came to visit me she never took the effort to go into her car and drive half an hour to visit me. And she always had a very good excuse. Oh, I have my dog. I cannot bring my dog to your place. That's too laborious. And I have to bring the food and the water and blah, 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 blah. So she always had an excuse. During the years of so-called friendship, she moved two times. She moved farther away so I drove more than half an hour and in the end she moved to a place uh, more um, in the how is it called in the rural you know more out in the country and it was one hour for me to drive and I started getting annoyed that I'm always driving one hour and I carried my musical instruments and uh, I brought the shruti box and I brought the monochord and I did some uh, kind of uh, mediumship exercises with her to train um, because she was interested and thought it's fun to be friends with a medium and get everything gratis and for free and she was really sucking my energy and I didn't notice that. In the end, you know, where she lived, 
another woman was uh, moving into a flat very close by and they came along very well so um, when i was invited this other woman also came so now i had uh, kind of two of the same kind of attitude which i did not want to look at and the last time i was invited to them i was kind of getting angry when i was driving there thinking again i'm driving there for one hour and carrying all my stuff with me, my musical instruments, and they're just sitting like the spider in the net on their ass and expecting me. Of course, as a guest, I get something to drink, some tea, some water, whatever, also something to eat. And one of them, the other one, always prepared because our kind of visits uh, extended up to uh, eight hours, more or less. That's one working day. And I drove home uh, late at night at 11 or 12, 12 o'clock. She always uh, prepared a soup. And the funny thing was, that soup was without uh, uh, protein. She had this, uh, that was her excuse. She had problems with uh, digesting uh, protein, so it was only carbohydrate or how that's called in English. I drove home from an eight hour visit being hungry after being served a soup and I had to eat at 12 o'clock coming home a kind of a sandwich or something that kind of nurtured me. So this already speaks volumes. And it happened in the, lace, in the latest uh, um, meetings that this first friend was always asking questions and wanting a kind of pulling out knowledge, spiritual knowledge from me. But when I started to talk, she always interrupted me. And then there came nothing that added to what I had said, but there came, you know, the usual blah, blah, blah. My daughter, my work, my dog, my this, my that, uh, it happened and blah, blah, blah. And I got annoyed and angry and more and more angry. And then I told her, why are you always interrupting me? I feel disrespected. That's not nice. Why do you do that? Oh, I'm not aware of that and blah, 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 you know how it goes. So the funny thing was our last meeting I suddenly had to bring with me my monochord, which I used in some of the videos and already told you. These are very high frequency overtones that this uh, instrument produces and entity attachments. They can't stand these frequencies. They get mad. So I offered last time what about uh, a meditation going into our own heart and see what we can perceive or receive there? And the other one, always kind of um, telling me, oh, that was far too short, your little exercise. I saw so much more and I wanted to uh, um, have more time there and spend more time and experience everything and more and more and more. So to her, it was always too short and she was kind of complaining after being gifted with uh, some spiritual exercise or a meditation free <laughs> from me. And that time, the first one with the dog, suddenly when I started striking the monochord, not caring about this little group of three and how the others would feel or how it is if she interrupts in the middle or the beginning, the start of the meditation, she started, oh, I can't have that. that that's triggering me. These sounds, no, oh, what, what can I do now? And out of my mouth, because we all had closed eyes, just came, that's your problem. So she stood up, interrupted and broke this energetic cycle we had already formed and went out and walked and smoked a cigarette. I continued with the meditation with the other woman still present and uh, carrying on. 
and after I finished, then kind of in a harsh tone, she said to me, that was far too much and far too long. I've, I was there already and you were still talking uh, about how to go into the, your heart and so. And I thought, well, uh, the first times it was too short and I did not leave her enough time. Now suddenly it's too short, you know. You can do whatever you want. It's never right for both of them. And the one with the dog who interrupted the meditation, that should have given me the sign she has an entity attachment. That's why she interrupted me and disturbed me all the time before, trying as if uh, she want to ask something and want to have my knowledge. And when I let it out, then boom, she was interrupting. And I got so angry and I was still in that false mindset. Well, anger, I know emotions are neutral per se, so anger is not bad. The kind of um, the notation or the color comes with how you use your anger, what you do with it. You can punch your neighbor into the face or you can uh, chop wood and uh, make your living room warm with that, then it's a positive use. So I didn't get it. I went home and I was kind of frustrated. And the next morning I woke up and I felt bad, really bad. As if my guides or spirit world had washed my head during sleep in the other dimensions telling me, hey girl, you're kind of uh, selling yourself out to the wrong people. They don't uh, know to appreciate that. Why are you doing that? You're doing wrong. You're kind of wasting your energy. There is an imbalance. They take more than they give. Here again, we have the helper syndrome of the empaths, the sensitive ones that are able to project themselves into the shoes of the other and feel or imagine how would, would he or she feel. But you know, the narcissist that only take and want to have and get, they never have a thought like that. They're not even able to feel into the shoes of the other. They only think from their standpoint, I, me, mine, uh, what's in there for me? What can I get from that? And the rest is of no interest to them. So I wrote an SMS <laughs> because I did not want to call them via phone because that's sometimes very tricky. You, one word gives the other and you land where you don't want to go and you really have then an, more than an argument, argument. Maybe you run right into a fight and I did not want that. So I wrote, hey girls, um, I woke up this morning feeling bad and disbalanced and uh, there are some points that I noticed already but um, I missed to speak them out a bit earlier. I'm not nurtured when I come home. I still have to eat. That soup is not nurturing and that speaks volumes for me about the energetic balance. So there's something wrong here. Don't you feel anything? How uh, do you view that? And uh, the one preparing the soup cowardly did not say anything, no reaction at all. And the one with the dog you know, she's following some of these very beautiful, always talking about light and love, spiritual people on the internet, but was complaining a lot uh, and very negative, intoxicating herself uh, with things like uh, again and again in the last time saying, Oh, when is it? When is it over this 3D? I'm so sick and tired of that. Can't stand it any longer. Can't you tell me when it's over? How long does it take? Uh, and so and so. You know, that's only negative talk. And that's in the first case intoxicating herself. And she already had some kind of body problems. 
She was even diagnosed by a chiropractor with kind of an imbalanced state. That t tells everything that speaks volumes. If you have an imbalanced state in your body, she couldn't even step downstairs any longer because her left side wasn't working well and her left leg and things like that. So, well, it was right in front of my eyes, but I did not want to look because I wanted to have friends. And I had that lesson several times in my life and I still have a little blind spot there. That's why I'm more cautious now with friends, you know. Well, at least I'm learning. And that was kind of uh, the last lesson that nagged on me as well because it also hurts to break up a friendship which you thought were friends. And in the end, it turns out these were false friends. So this one with the dog, she wiped away everything I wrote so easily without even reflecting or going inside and checking what is my part of the story. Maybe uh, there is something to it what uh, Gabrielle is telling or what she's kind of um, making us conscious about by speaking it out and sending this SMS. No, it was right away, right from the start. It was, oh, that's only you. You're creating ego drama and you're accusing us. Maybe you have an entity attachment. She was projecting her own stuff onto me and she was the one with the entity attachment. And now I learned a very important lesson about my anger. That's my early alarm system. Whenever I get angry, that warns me that there is something off. And I misinterpreted that and thought, oh, it's me. I'm a bad person. I'm still angry. I get angry at people and things like that. No, it is not. And I cannot thank Spirit World enough for getting that le lesson now. And uh, I have another very illustrating um, kind of example because um, I sometimes do uh, public demonstrations, um, kind of uh, giving uh, mediumship messages from the other side or uh, channeling and doing Q&A and things like that. And I did that uh, just recently. And in the public, there was a woman that came with wide open eyes, kind of looking like a scared kitten when it thunders. And that was her normal look in her face. And I couldn't even look at that woman. And then I closed my eyes and went into channeling and everybody could ask his questions. And I was a bit bored and annoyed and got angry because, you know, sometimes what people ask, you know. One was asking, uh, why do I have for the third time uh, a water in my cellar and it's ruining everything that I kept there? And then with their angel patience, which I do not have yet, <laughs> I'm still human, I'm still learning and uh, trying to get better, um, the best version of myself. I heard through my own mouth the Elohim answering, well, don't you know that water, even in dream is, and in psychology as well, is the symbol for emotions and for your soul. So if it's the third time that you have water in your cellar and the cellar is the symbol for your subconscious, what kind of dead bodies, uh, traumas, unsolved conflicts or uh, unsolved issues with uh, whomever you have in your subconscious. And now is the time because the whole system, the whole solar system is amping up in frequency. That's not only collectively for the whole humanity. That's why everything is kind of breaking apart in the outside world. You see a lot of that and truth is coming out more and more. It's also happening on the individual level. So that's why things like that come up and they come first in symbolic form. And okay, um, 
I knew that answer already. I had that several times, so I got it. Um, the woman asking that also got it in the end. But the one with the wide open eyes, the scared one, the one in fear, because only in fear, the lowest vibration entities can and will attach because that's what they feed off. And if they can't suck more fear out of you and create more fear in you, then they stretch out their tentacles to your surrounding, the people around you. And if they can't create fear there, then they do the next step, which is still low energy. It is creating anger. So that woman asked some uh, questions with, which made me so angry inside, but I was sitting there, kind of stepped aside to let the Elohim answer. And they answered, and uh, in the end, she kind of did not even get the answer. And I was already more or less furiously raging inside of this body. Is she stupid or what? Sorry to say that, but it even felt as if she was playing stupid and only pretending she did not understand what the Elohim were really delivering, friendly still and calm in the most simple words possible. So that was frustrating for me. And after that, I thought, oh, maybe I should stop doing that. And I drove home. And that stare of the woman followed me home. I still had it kind of in my auric field. When, when I kind of looked inside, I saw the stare, like these two eyes in my auric field. And it took me a few more hours back home to get it. She has an entity attachment. That's why she's so scared. And that's why I got so angry. At that point, I still hadn't really fully realized anger is my early alarm system. So then I knew she has an entity attachment. And who sees is, who sees that? And in that case, it was me, is kind of responsible because I saw it. So I cannot unsee what I saw and I cannot unknow what I know. So I knew in the same minute whether she knows it or not, she will never uh, find that out. I have to remove that entity from her. So I sat down on my couch at uh, one o'clock at, at night after that public dem, and I removed the entity from her field and I sealed all the entrances and so on. And I had to do the same with uh, that so-called false friend who only abused me, but my part was I allowed to be abused. I have to learn from that and not allow it any longer and look better at the so-called friends. So we were in kind of fight and argument via the uh, SMS and uh, uh, her reaction and uh, just wiping away everything and uh, giving all the guilt uh, to me I knew, wow, she has an entity attachment as well. And now even being a bit in a grumpy mood with her because it wasn't nice, I knew I have to remove her entity attachment as well, whether I like it or not. And I didn't feel as if I like it, but I just can't act differently and say, well, I'm in a fight with her. That's her problem. I leave her with that entity attachment. I cannot do that. Sorry, I'm not made like that. So I sat down after the fight and arguing with her and we broke contact already. I had to sit down and remove that entity attachment from her as well. And while doing that, I even got the information how it came in to her field. She has a dog sitter with very, very difficult circumstances 
kind of a depressed, uh, uh, nearly suicide wife or daughter at home. And I already sense dark energy there, all, also in the house where the dog sitter lives. And she was uh, giving her dog when she wanted to have some free time and do her whatever, her shopping. She gave her dog to that dog sitter. And the dog isn't guilty of anything. Sometimes these entities use animals as a transportation uh, vehicle to get to the next client whom they want to suck out of, of the life force and energy because they feed of that. And the entities from the lower 4D are known for that. These are kind of the demonics or um, the low astral um, shadowy entities and figures. They do that. And by that, they also overstep cosmic law of source divine. Uh, they do not uh, respect free will and the boundary of other uh, living entities within their kind of auric field. They just jump onto them and suck the energy because they're hungry. And with the higher frequency now happening, for all of us in our solar system here on earth in the astral and the unconscious and uh, wherever in our auric fields they go after humans more and more now because food is getting uh, kind of there there is a lack of food if there's not enough low energy, then they have to jump uh, r more rapidly from one to the other and suck out whatever they can. And the higher frequency, of course, is forcing them out of their low vibration realm. So that's not really the big problem because the higher the frequencies and we're all amping up, the whole solar system is amping up, they will all die and starve because the food is lacking. When the energies go higher, then they don't have anything to feed off and they will just vanish. So with some more time, they will, will vanish. But right now, it's just very often that I encounter entity attachments in other people. And now I know when I get angry, Oh, again, entity attachment or something off balance and energy wise. So that was um, about projection and also some of my uh, stories uh, where I had to nag on and go through. And uh, that wasn't nice. But the thing is, if it hurts, we learn. And we learn better with the so-called mistakes. Afterwards, we're much wiser and we know better, although it hurts and sometimes it has to hurt. And on the higher level, we created that ourselves before the incarnation to learn and grow from that, to do ourselves a favor, you know, and we, as the human or the ego, only uh, perceive that, uh, what a mess, now I lost another friend and she's not even saying thank you or, you know, I apologized various times to the dog lady when I used a wrong word or a wrong tone, but I never heard the word sorry coming from her lips. She never apologized to me. So that also speaks volumes. There is an imbalance and uh, you should look maybe a bit closer and better and just notice and observe how people behave, how they speak, what they are giving out, a person that is able to say, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, I was wrong, then at least they are able to reflect upon themselves. People who are not able and you never heard them say sorry or I apologize, they're not able to reflect upon themselves. They always think I am right, the other one is wrong, 
So they're just projecting their blind spots where they can't see themselves, where they are wrong, onto the other. And to make uh, kind of the, the last word or statement to that, I heard someone else say that as well. It was Robert Edward Grant, and I love that. It is we have to choose love over being right. And if you still choose being right over love, then you still have a long way to go and to learn a lot. So that is what I wanted to share today about projection and uh, some other things connected to that. I leave you with that and I hope you get uh, maybe some insights or a different viewpoint um, that makes you ponder and helps you grow on your soul path. Thank you, dear beautiful souls, for watching. Blessings, love and light onto your path. Bye.